morning. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. to prayer for the Ewe nation, for the Abri. This is a call to prayer. If you are able, stand where you are and face the east, which is the direction of the Kodesh city of Jerusalem, where Yah has placed his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallel Uyahusha. Let us prepare our hearts to enter into prayer to make our petitions known to the Most High. Abihua, we declare we will do all that you say. We will have no other mighty ones before you. You are our power, our strong tower, our shield and our buckler. We live, breathe, and have our being in you. You are our supplier. Our provider. We look for provision from none other. You have given us the Ruach HaKodesh or the Set Apart Spirit. We will listen for the Set Apart Spirit, for the small, still voice. We will. Look in your word and receive the wisdom of your Proverbs. We will look and read your Tehillim and we will sing your praises. We declare that we are your people. You said in your scripture that you have only known one nation. And out of the, all the families on the earth, you chose one. Hallelujah. To whom much is given, much is required. And you have given us your Torah. And so, as we come before you to make our petitions known, we humble ourselves. We humble ourselves right now. And we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are awesome, perfect in all your ways. Hallelujah. The Shamayim declares your esteem. Hallelujah. And the Eretz, your handiwork. Hallelujah. There is none like unto you. Your judgments are correct and true. Hallelujah. You are righteous in all your doings and we will declare your good deeds hallelujah, hallelujah. we will declare your commandments hallelujah. we will guard your precepts hallelujah. and honor your mashiach hallelujah. who has bought us with a blood-bought price everything follows your ordinances the luminaries follow your ordinances and you gave them to us for signs, for seasons, for days, for years, for Moedim, appointed times. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we are here today on Yom Shabbat because we understand that it is from the moon and the stars that our Shabbat is determined. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
as we come today to make our petitions known, we can't help but come with an attitude of gratitude. We praise you. We praise you for who you are. We praise you. There is none like unto you. You are worthy. You are worthy of all of our thanksgiving, worship, adoration, praise. There is none like unto you. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise because you are worthy. You are worthy of all of our praise. Hallelujah. We come grateful for all that you have done. Told our Rabbah for all that you have done. Told our Rabbah for all that you're doing even now. Told our Rabbah for all that you will do amongst your people. Hallelujah. Told our Rabbah for all that you will do in our lives. In the life of your Hekals. And in the lives of all Yisrael, wherever they are scattered. Hallelujah. We pray for our brethren today. We pray for our brethren in Barbados. We pray for our brethren in the islands. We pray for our brethren in Africa. We pray for our brethren in the United States and in England and everywhere that your people are scattered. We ask that you would parat them today, those that are keeping your commandments, those that are guarding your precepts, those that are holding to the testimony of Hamashiach, Yahusha. They might say the name a little differently, but it's your their heart that you are looking at. Do they have a heart of obedience to you? And if they do, we ask that you would bring them that one more step into the knowledge of the truth on today that something would be said or done that would plant a seed that they would know that you are Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Barak Hashem Yahuwah. Barak Hashem Yahusha. Hallelujah. Now we ask that your Ruach HaKodesh would move freely amongst your people today. Whatever continent they are on, wherever they are, we ask that the elders would touch and agree right now and that you would touch your people. Heal your people. Renew the Ruach. Renew a right Ruach within your people. That you would restore your people on today. That you would make your people whole on today. That you would bring unity. That you would bring that both sticks together. Both houses together into one. Hallelujah. That you would perform your word on today, Ab Yahuwah. That there would be unity amongst the nation. But how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Bring us into agreement, Ab Yahuwah. In the way that you would have us to walk. According to your will. According to your way. According to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We desire to be a hide with Hamashiach as he is a hide with you, Ab Yahuwah. And in that, that our Ruachs would draw nigh unto you and that you would draw nigh unto us. You are a spirit, a Ruach. And those that worship you must worship you in Torah and in the Ruach HaKadosh in spirit, in the Ruach HaKadosh, and in Torah. Psalms 119, 142. Your word is truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we come today desiring a closer walk with you. We come today asking that you would open up the windows of Shamaim and pour out a baraka on us that we are not able to receive. Hallelujah. We know that you are our provider and there is none other. It's not our jobs. It's not the country that we live in. Hallelujah. It's not anyone but you. 
We esteem you above all things, Abihua. You are worthy, and you are worthy of all esteem. And your Mashiach, Yahusha, who has bought us with the blood bought price, it is a debt that we can never repay. We say, Your Lamb is worthy to break the seals and open the books. Hallelujah. We understand that we are in the latter days. And to whom much is given, much is required. That we are to be salt. That we are to be light. That we are to be set apart living Torah. And we would ask that you would bring those into fellowship whom you desire to be in the salt community. We see that you are moving across the world. That we have Akeem in Barbados. That we have Akeem in different cities. Those who you are drawing. Hallelujah. We take no credit. It's all you, Abihua. It's all you. It's always been about you. It's not about us. It's never been about us. You are so far above us. Your ways are not our ways. But we thank you that you are renewing a right ruach within us. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Hallelujah. You are our strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. But we have no righteousness except that which was imputed to us from your Mashiach, Yahusha. Our righteousness was as filthy rags. Our ancestors walked contrary to you. And as a result, you walk contrary to them too. But we say, told our Rabbah, that you put a time limit on it. But you said it would be four hundred years that we would be in bondage or servitude as bondmen and bond women in a nation where they wouldn't respect the old and they would not respect the young and they would speak with a foreign tongue. We thank you for the word of wisdom that you have dropped continually throughout your word and the word of knowledge that helps us apply the wisdom in these last and wicked days. We say, Todah Rabbah, we were made to praise you and we desire to lift up your name, magnify your name, make your name known amongst the nations. We will publish your deeds. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, we would ask if Kaliyah would come and recite the Shema. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give praise unto Yahuwah and his Yahi, Yahusha, our Mashiach. Amen. It is truly good to meet at the appointed time with our Allahim. Hallelujah. Our Av. Hallelujah. Hear, O Yasharal, Yahuwah, our Allahim. Yahuwah is high, and you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart, and you shall impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way. And when you lie down, and when you rise up, and shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. 
Hallelujah. 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 Let us now prepare our hearts to praise Him. We were made to praise Him. Scripture says that if we don't praise Him, that the rocks will cry out and praise Him. Praise is an intimate relationship between you and the Most High. It doesn't matter who else is present. It doesn't matter how you look if you're making a face. It's a face of joy because now is the appointed time that we are to come together and to praise Him and to make His name known and to thank Him. What has He done for you this week? Has He kept you? Has He fed you? Are you clothed? Are you in your right mind? You woke up this morning. Yes. I think there's a long list of everything that he's done. That's right. Are you walking in his paths of righteousness today for his name's sake? Did he bring you out of darkness that you might be in this marvelous light? Did he bring you into the truth that you don't have to suffer in darkness following blindly the traditions of men? Yes, he did. Can. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do a song of praise to Helam, chapter 23. Yahuwah is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. But it will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. Hallelujah. And you all are witnesses because you're here today. Whatever city you're in today, if you're praising his name on today, on Yom Shabbat, the appointed time, the time that he set apart for us to meet with him, then believe that you have received because he has heard your prayers. You have not turned your foot away from his righteous paths, yes. nor your ear away from his Torah. So believe that you have received what you have prayed for on today. Hallelujah. 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 Because he who has begun a good work in you is faithful and just Hallelujah. to complete that work. Zion, unspeakable joy. That's who we serve, our Elohim, the only one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo-wee. It is wonderful to be here with the Mishpachah today. If you are not in this room, you are still in our hearts. It doesn't matter what city you're in. It doesn't matter what country you're in. You are our Mishpachah. If your testimony is anything like ours, family members have turned away. Old friends have turned away when you started to walk in the way of truth. And you began to understand what Hamashiach meant when he said, Who is my mother and my brother but those who keep my father's commandments? My family. Wherever you are, you are my family. And contrary to what the world says, we are our brother's keepers. Come, come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If one has, we all have. Come. And the word says that we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb deals with our sin. And by the word of our testimony. And so we have to have a testimony. That's what we get when we live our lives. We get a testimony because we make some bad decisions. We make some good decisions from the bad decisions. We gain some wisdom so that we don't keep making the same bad decisions over and over again. And when we get that wisdom, we understand that the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. So we have to esteem him above all things. Above all things. He said, if you put me first, I will add all these other things unto you. So we don't have to desire the American dream. No. All we have to do is hold to the covenant that he made with our ancestors. Mm -hmm. We want his promises, not the American dream. Right. Not the dream of, uh, we don't have to compete with the people next door. Hallelujah, we live in a set apart community. Ah, and as time yeah. goes on, more and more of our brethren will gravitate to set-apart communities because they will understand that coming out of her is not just the church. It's coming out of Babylon that we draw together, O oh, nation, not desire. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, I would ask if uh, Kalia would uh, read a sermon. Um, for, I'm sorry, a song. A song? I, I'm sure that you could do a sermon if you wanted to, but because you you one of those knowledgeable Hebrew ladies, but uh, we desire a song. Yeah. <laughs>
search me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought from afar. Depart from me, therefore, 
men of bloodshed. They speak evil against you, wickedness. Bring your enemies to naught. Oh, Yahuwah. Do I not hate them who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? With a complete hatred, I hate them. They have become my enemies. Search me, O oh all, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts. And see if an idolatrous way is in me. Thank you. 
take us into tomorrow it has us to be today. You are the potter, we are the clay. is saying to the called out assemblies on today. Let us prepare our eyes to see the wondrous things that he has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His word is a living word. And it is good for us today. It's told for us today just as it was told for the play time when it was spoken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, it's a um, beautiful day. Uh, uh, wonderful to see everybody here. Uh, those that are with us uh, in person and those that are with us uh, via YouTube. Um, this is a, uh, I can't express it enough how much of a blessing it is to be in community with uh, those that are here, those that are uh, have made that commitment in their lives that, you know, to come and to live a life of a yeah. set apart and to live toward. Um, no, it is not important that everybody be in community to live a set apart life or to, or to live soft. Uh, but, you know, we've been damaged. When you get to a place where you're in community, we began to see how damaged we are based off of those things that we tried to accomplish together. We've not been taught how to do this in our in this nation, this place of our captivity. This place has ruined our uh, ruined us in so many ways, and um, coming together is so much we have to learn, so much that we have to uh, endure in order to be able to accomplish those things that the Most High desired for us. Some of us, our viewpoint have been tainted because of how uh, this nation has taught us. Uh, we go to schools, and in those schools they indoctrinate us, and they, uh, they create uh, an environment where we have ghettos and uh, uh, neighborhoods and places where we, we, struggle to, we struggle to make ends meet. We struggle to be able to um, uh, grow in the areas that is, that is really uh, important for us to grow. And the community gives us that, I mean, to take care of. And, and uh, Maurice Shema was saying that earlier, you know, how, you know, if one, is, if one is rich, all of us rich. If one is poor, all of us are poor. If one, you know, if one is struggling, then all of us struggle. Yeah. Torah teaches us to take care of each other. Torah tells us that if there that uh, that there should not be any poor amongst us, that that means that we've got to be looking out for each other and the conditions that they're living in and what they're struggling, the areas that they need help. 
community gives us the opportunity to do that. You know, and so uh, for us here in Salt Community, you know, it's just been a huge blessing. One of the things that I love about the community and, and those that are fellowship with us know what it's like that when we sit around the evening table, you know, after we after we've broken bread, to just sit down and begin to talk about those things that the Most High has done for us throughout the day. Mm -hmm. You know, often we we have other plans for that evening, but because we get into a groove where we're just talking about the goodness of the Most High, we can sit there for hours even after the evening meal is over with. That's right. And uh, it is just a blessing that, that every day is a day of fellowship. Every right. day yeah. is, a, is, is a Hebrew gathering. That's right. Every, every day. day. That's priceless. <laughs> <laughs> That's priceless. Daniel, I'll say he's jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, I'll say he's jealous. We miss you, Aki. One day we will dwell together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you know, Concerning Daniel, um, I'm, as much as this brother like to stay uh, texting and on YouTube, <laughs> man, if we get here, that's all we're gonna do is be talking about, <laughs> be talking about the Most High. But that's a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, because that's this is what you know when our forefathers sat at the at you know at the gate of the city. You know they they sat there discussing. The, you know, the goodness of, of the Most High. And they were sharing, they were building, and they were growing in wisdom and understanding concerning the Word. And one of the things that really came to me, you know, when I began to think about them sitting at the front gate, you know, they're sitting, they're sitting in a public environment. Everybody in the city can, that would walk by could hear the confessions and could hear the convictions and could hear all that the elders were talking about. Anybody that was new to the city, as they come through the gate, they can immediately get a feel for the, the atmosphere of the city in which they came into. Why? Because of the elders sitting at the gate talking about the goodness of the Most High. But in order to be able to sit at that front gate to the city and to say the things that you say, you have to live a life that is that honors every word that you say. That's right. You can't be at the front gate talking about how I'm living a life of salt, set apart and living Torah, and then turn around and go back and be beating your wife. Mm -hmm. Because everybody will have heard your confession at the front gate. Mm -hmm. And they know what you're doing. They know, you know, that that you, you that you've been hypocritical to the words that were spoken out in the open. Out, out, you know, where everybody could hear them. So you have to live a life beyond reproach. That's right. I thought that was amazing because a lot of times, you know, brothers want to get behind closed doors and have a conversation, but then nobody can hold you accountable. But when you sit in an open and public place and you make your statements known, then everybody can hold. Everybody will hold you accountable for every word that comes out of your mouth. Yeah. It just amazed me. I thought just how. Uh, when we look at our culture, how our culture even uh, it, uh, creates an atmosphere that uh, makes us accountable one to another. Makes us accountable one to another. The community um, is another uh, is another tool in that, uh, in being able to do that. And uh, uh, gives us that ability to hold each other accountable, grow, and to become stronger uh, in our walk uh, with the Most High. Today we're in uh, uh, Ezekiel 28, excuse me, 38 and 39. Last week we we were in uh, Ezekiel 37 and we talked about the valley of the dry bones and mm -hmm. how that prophecy um, is, you know, we're living that out in this day and time. What Ezekiel saw was us. He saw this generation. He saw us coming from a place where we had been all, uh, uh, we had been so destroyed as a people that it didn't look like there was anything possible could come from us. We even, as we look at ourselves, have to 
have to all you know when you know when Ezekiel was asking Can these bones live. That's the same thing the Most High, you know. That's the same thing the Ruach is asking us as we're coming to the understanding: Can we live? Can we be a people again? Can we be a nation? Ezekiel said, "What our heart said, you know." Mm -hmm. Because only the Most High knows. Because it's, if it's if it's not in Him, then we're not we're, we're not coming out. Right. If it's not in Him, we're not going to make it. We're not going to succeed. And everything that we've ever tried, we've been we uh, it's, it's it's falling apart. But He told us it would long before we even set foot into the Promised Land as a nation of people. Moshe said that you know we would be sold. In captivity, is sold as uh, male servants and, ma uh, and, and uh, female servants, and there would be no one to buy us or to redeem us. Right? So we would be in a condition that no matter who would come, would rise to the top. You know, we would never c come out of the circumstances and the situation. And they've been talking about uh, there's been many uh, from one uh, belief system to the next about uh, uh, trying to get our people to come together to uh, uh, put our monies together, to try to spend our money in black-owned stores and businesses. And we've been talking about this for as long as I can remember, and we're still not doing it. Because we're trying to go about it in the wrong way. Until we go back to tour, nothing we try. It doesn't make a difference how much, how much sense it makes. We can have all, you know, we can have a perfect plan laid out, and we will fail at it. Until we come back to Torah. If we're not going to live Torah, the Most High is not going to let us accomplish anything. Black Wall Street was an example of that. That was a hugely successful place. But if Torah is not going to be the foundation of that place, then it's going to be brought down. This community, we, you know. If this community that we're in, if it's not going to be based in Torah, then it's going it's going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. No matter how much success, no matter how much, no matter you know what resources are given, if we don't if we don't build a foundation in Torah, we're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. We'll stay that valley of the dry bones, and we'll stay in a place where no, everybody that looks uh, looks upon us will say, you know, they're very dry. There ain't nothing, no no life, no opportunity, no. Nothing, nothing, nothing in what I see can uh, 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 can accomplish or, or become anything. Mm -hmm. But most I talk said prophesy to those drop -off. Tell them who they are. Tell them who their Elohim is. And those that have, were, those that were hearing, those that had a ear to hear, those you know, we began to come alive and. Uh, 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 muscle and sinew began to come together. The bones began to come together. But this was a still a process. They all had to move and to come together. They became a great shaking. And next thing you know, they stood up as a mighty army, a nation, ready to stand and to go about and to do the do the will of the Most High. But that's where we're at. We're coming together. Seeing you, flesh is coming upon us, and we're beginning to look like we are capable of accomplishing something. We look like we're capable of being able to once again be a people again. Mm -hmm. We're living that up. We're seeing it all over the place. People are awakening and understanding who they are. But the scriptures also let us know that when we come together, as a people, as a nation, that judgment is, is soon about to happen upon the nation, uh, the nations round about, those nations that have held us captive. And we can see, just like in, just like in the first Exodus, they weren't, you know, uh, 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 Mitzrayim was not willing to let us go. And the world all the places that we've been scattered, they're not, going, they're not willing to let us go. Why we spend so much money? We make this nation what it is. We built this nation and our money is, is, is lying in the pockets of all the rich people in this nation. 
We provide for we, we provide for them a workforce. We provide for them entertainment. We provide for them creativity, mm -hmm. invention, music. You know, it amazes me just, you know, when we talk about music, I mean, for the last, you know, month or so, you know, we've just been coming up with songs on the fly. Mm -hmm. just, you know, just as the, as the Ruach moves, Hallelujah. we start singing and start coming up with choruses, start yeah. coming up with lyrics. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's in us to praise and to worship. Hallelujah. We don't need to sit and practice all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where, where the ruach moving you? You know what? You know you know what? You know where? You know where's the ruach, what is the ruach speaking to you? And then just put it to song. Smile, let them fingers move on them strings. <laughs> All praise to the Most High. Who you know, allows the fingers to move. <laughs> I, one of the things that I have loved is to hear Kali uh, 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 uh sing the song. Sing the song. Sing the song. That's right. Oh. That's what's going on. <laughs> you know, I used to read them as a child, and I was always, you know, and I'm always thinking, man, how is these songs? Because I didn't know how, I, you know, but, you know, when the Ruach is on you and you are moving and you're speaking it in the way that the Spirit is, then, yeah, they, 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 then you can hear the song. You can begin to hear the worship. You can begin to hear the praise. And all we got to do is come up with a chorus behind it. <laughs> so that has been, it's been amazing just to uh, uh, just allow the Ruach to move us in songs even as we strive into uh, just to worship them on uh, these set-apart days, these, these Moedims in which he has called us to. Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. And the word of Yehovah came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against God of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, Sam. We spoke concerning this often and how Ezekiel, what, uh, what Ezekiel had to say came from the Most High. He didn't just go out and begin to say, yeah, look, y'all, you know, let's, let's reason together, you no. Know? The word of Yahuwah came to him and began to speak through him to give him a word not only for his people mm -hmm. but for the nations round about. Last week again we talked about those dry bones but in those dry bones he's looking even ahead beyond even the Messiah, the promised Messiah to come. Looking beyond you know, uh, all of what would be written from uh, from the from his descendants as 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 they continue to strive to be obedient to the will of the Father, mm -hmm. all the way up until we get into 2000 in the 2000s where we began to come together to wake up. He, he was speaking to that generation. Right. But then we go into the 28th chapter, and then he goes even beyond that because he goes beyond to look into to see what's going to happen after the millennial kingdom. Because see, the, the world and the enemy that, that, that is in this world will be fighting and striving to destroy us mm -hmm. until they are ultimately destroyed, until they have, until all of their ability to come against us will, will be destroyed. And here we're seeing, well, uh, he's saying to prophesy uh, to Gog and to Magog. And so when we look into who Gog and Magog is, there's always been a lot of questions. Always been, you know, some, you know, I grew up and everybody thought it was Russia. Everybody was saying, you know, Russia is, 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 is Magog. Maybe Russia is, has, some, has something to do with who they are. But, you know, as we look, we see that, you know, in, in my study I'm seeing that that Gog and Magog, or Magog being the, 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 the country or the nation, is those nations that are of the north, that are uh, north of the Caucasus Mountain. But then they start going into, um, 
and to the prince of Rosh and um, Meshach and Tubal prophesy against him. And those nations uh, were the Black and the Caspian Sea and the, and the, and, and the uh, Caucasus Mountain. And so it is, a, it is an expanding um, um, uh, prophecy that expands really to the nation, not only the nations of the north, but the nations round about the north and those nations that are actually holding us captive all over the four corners of the earth. So in Genesis 10 and 2, you have Meshach named as a son of Yepheth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says uh, in our scripture, uh, chapter 38 and uh, verse 2, Son of Adam, set your face against Gog, comma, the land of Magog, the chief prince yeah. of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. So this is where the genealogies become important mm -hmm. in your uh, Torah, to understand who came from who. Because in the days of antiquity, they named cities after people. Mm -hmm. They named countries after people. So if we want to understand who someone is, we have to look in Scripture, but it has to be line upon line and precept upon precept. Because if you're not careful, you'll get confused. There's another Meshach that's named as a son of Shem in 1 Chronicles 1 and 17. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand which one is which. Right. So that's where history then becomes important as another witness because you, have, you need to be able to look back in history and go, who fits these prophecies? Okay? So as we, in the last days, this becomes more and more important to know who the players are. Right. If you look in the Middle East right now, you need a scorecard mm -hmm. to understand who's who. Mm -hmm. If you look in the current headlines, you see that uh, Russia is backing Bashar al-Assad, uh, the regime, and the United States is trying to topple that regime. So they have uh, armies opposing each other on different sides, supporting the regime for Russia and the United States wanting to topple that regime. So it's the same thing with Gog, May, or in, uh, the Muslims say Juj and Mejuj. Um, and they are listed in their book also. I'm not saying that this is something that we need to study. I'm saying that these peoples are known and have been known for a long time in, in, in the world. And so they, they are written in, in their prophecies, they're there, in our prophecy, it's there, but we have to hold to the Torah. The Torah is what confirms, gives us our confirmation. Okay, so, so we see in the genealogies that uh, Meshach is named as a son of Yepheth. So we'll keep it there, and I'm sure as we go along, we'll find out more. But as, um, as, as more we're speaking, you know, talking about the, uh, uh, the prophecies and other religious systems, Gog and Magog is also mentioned. It's also mentioned because these, these uh, they understand uh, especially when you go into the Muslim world, they uh, they 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 know what Torah says. Yeah. Their book their book their book tells them that Torah is important. So they see and they understand so much of what's going on, and, and they they the, some of the stuff is twisted. Yes, some of the stuff they believe because they you know uh, because they uh, they they believe that the word was tainted, so they don't just take the you know the Bible or. What we know, you know, in the '66 as 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 gospel, but they have their they have their prophet uh, their their prophecies that they are, uh, that they understand and that they are looking to, and in them they see Gog and Magog. 
they believe that they they believe that Gog and Magog is the is the uh, Jewish people and America. But we see also that you know when you begin to look at the the the, the territories and where uh, Gog and Magog are, you know you even look at you know what he uh, what Moro is talking about in in Japheth. Where did they go? They went to the European. Uh, that's where he was. That's where he went. He went to the European island. So what we're going to see is we we'll see that the that Gog and Magog are the people of the north north of where uh, where the land of Israel is at. But not only there, those people have scattered all over the earth. America is a is a nation built uh, uh, or ruled by descendants of Gog and Magog. Mm -hmm. They're all over the place because they go all over the place to colonize. And so when you try to pinpoint a place and to say, well, it's this people, well, those people have colonized and went all over the face of the earth. And when they've gone all over the face of the earth, then they're going to draw people from those areas, from those continents, and, in the, and we'll see in our lesson how they're bringing them together to actually war against um, uh, war against Israel in, in the millennial, at the end of the millennial kingdom. So let's just uh, look for a minute at some of the people that Meshach is said to be the ancestor of. Several nations like the Moshini, the Lyrians, Georgians. Mm -hmm. where, is this, where is the state of Georgia? That's, that's Russia. Russia. Yes, okay. So who else? Caucasians. Mm -hmm. Caucasus Armenians. Mm -hmm. The two most prominent are Mushki of Assyria and Mashoi of Greece. It is also believed that the Muscovites, Muscovites, what city does that sound like? Moscow? <laughs> Muscovites? <laughs> are descended from Meshach. So that nation of Meshach was believed to have originated from the northeast of Asia Minor, particularly the area where Turkey, Turkey now that's right. occupies. That's right. that's right. Okay, so when we start to talk about Turkey, uh, we can't ignore the Ottoman Empire. Okay, now in, in my research, I understand that it says they traveled north and settled in Rosh. Rosh. Mm -hmm. What does that sound like? Mm -hmm. Modern day Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as Maury said, they integrated with a number of peoples. So it's not like you can put your finger on one area and say these people alone are the descendants because you've heard a bunch of people mentioned already. So you know that they're integrated within many peoples. So they had a history of trading copper vessels and people as slaves, along with the people of Tubal and Javan. Does that name sound familiar? Javan? It should, it's, it's been in You've read it in your scripture before. Mm -hmm. So uh, if these names sound foreign to you, begin to look at your genealogies again. Who begat who? Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see where they originated from. Now, does that tell you where they are now? Not necessarily, because when a people is conquered, then they begin, the conquerors begin to mix in other peoples and bring other peoples into that region. So it's not as easy as we might think to put our finger on who is who now. And he not only speaking to the people themselves, but to the governments or the heads of those governments. When he talks about God, God being the head of that of, the, of Magog, uh, the prince of Rosh, the prince or the uh, when you think of Rosh in the scriptures, when you say uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. What is that talking about? The head of the year. And so Rosh is talking about a head or the leadership or the governing uh, the governing body, the prince of Rosh, of Meshach and Tubal. So 
uh, again, we're talking about uh, 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 governments, continents, and states of, uh, that um, um, where all of these people. You, when, you know, when when this war or when this threat comes before Israel, it's not going to be just a hundred thousand men combing through the mountains going to be nations of armies surrounding about Israel. And this is what we'll see in the story as they go in, but the Most High has, got, Most High has prophesied beforehand what is going to happen. Because he always lets us know before because we need to pay attention to understand because he's letting you know that when you see these things happen and you see his prophecies come true, you'll know that I am Yahuwah. He's saying it over again. And so as he was woken us up, we know who is waking us up. We know why we're coming to this understanding, according to, uh, according to chapter 37, because Yahuwah has already told us. He's already prophesied it. He's already given it to the prophet to tell the people that we would, we would be in a condition where nobody believed we would come, you know, be anything, and then we would all of a sudden begin to rise in, that, in the last day. Um, yeah. Just a little more. Um, here it lists Gog's allies, which is Meshach and Tubal, mm -hmm. were seventh century kingdoms in central Anatolia, north of Israel, Persia From towards the north. east, Cush, okay. Ethiopia, and Put, Libya. So they're going to be the drawn, so they're going to be drawing even African nations in. So what we're looking at, and I'll let you finish, mm -hmm. but what we're looking at is a confederacy of God. nations as, you know, because Revelation is, it lets us know that in the end when Satan is released for a little while, he is going to deceive the world again, and these nations are going to come, these nations are going to come up against Israel, and they're going to surround Israel well into the mountains, but the Most High has got a plan. Continue. Um, Gomer mm -hmm. is the Cimmerians, a nomadic people north of the Black Sea, and mm -hmm. Beth Togama is was on the border of Tubal. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we have uh, Persia, Russia. Um, who else did you say? Kush, Kush. Libya, Put. Libya, Put. So it's it's not any one nation that's mentioned as confederate against us but many nations so you can see how scripture would then talk about after uh, the battle blood as high as the horse's bridle uh, not to mention we haven't even talked about uh, China oh, yeah. we haven't even talked about uh, the Philippines. We haven't talked about uh, who's Rocket Man. What country is he? North Korea. North Korea. We haven't <laughs> talked about. <laughs> we haven't talked about a lot of these other nations. So, it, but we see what we see. We see a, a pattern here. Yes. The sons of Japheth and the sons of Ham mm -hmm. coming against mm -hmm. the sons of Shem. So, if just for clarity, it's interesting to note that in modern-day Russia, most of them are Orthodox mm -hmm. Christians. Okay? We're talking about Orthodox Christians in modern-day Russia. But there is a contingent in that country that are Muslims. But uh, they're... Uh, who's their leader? Putin. Putin. Uh, his mother was an Orthodox Christian. Gave him a gold cross, which he still wears uh, around his neck. So, you know, it's not as easy as you might think to understand what's going on. But uh, Daniel all uh, mentions, uh, mentions uh, Psalms 83, because when we talked about the confed that the nation can confederate. Let's go ahead and read Psalms 83 for a minute. Let's 
turn that one. One, one through, uh, uh, one through five. O oh, Elohim, do not remain silent. Do not be speechless, mm -hmm. and do not be still, O oh, El. So, do not be silent. These are the things that this information, these things we need to know, these things cause us to put our trust and our hope in Elohim. When we, when we, when we know that He understands all that is happening, all that is going on, that there is no secrets, that that uh, that He is that He is sovereign in all things. Don't be silent. For look, your enemies make an uproar, and those hating you have lifted up their head. Those hating you have left the enemies. And we know that the enemies, every nation, is, has, 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 has placed itself as the enemy of the Most High. And how can we say that? Because all of the nations have taken his children and have held them captive. All of the nations have abused, all of the nations have come together, and we'll see, to destroy us as a people. Continue. They craftily plot against your people and conspire against your treasured ones. So they craftily come against your people and they conspire. So when all of the nations come and they, and, you know, uh, uh, and they sit in their big meetings, uh, the uh, what is that big meeting the uh, place they have with all the United nations. nations the United Nations and all of these big things you know what they 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 plot against us why because they know that the only way that they can stay in the powers of that they can continue to do the things that they do they have to they have to keep hidden the true identity of the people that have been chosen by the Most High. Okay. They have said, come and let us wipe them out as a nation. Let's wipe them out as a nation. And let the name of Israel be remembered no more. They do that, then they can run the world. They can go around and they can be they can do their sacri their human sacrifices. They can go and 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 uh, 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 involve themselves in pedophilia and homosexuality and all the sins that are talked about that go against the most high. All of the abominations that go against Torah, they want to practice and they want to do, and so they try to keep, they craftily try to destroy and to keep us down. Read that last line again. Mm -hmm. And let uh, come and let us wipe them out as a nation, and let the name of Yisrael be remembered no more. Let the name of the church be remembered no more. The, <laughs> the name of uh, the name of Yisrael. Oh. So it's not talking about the church. Right. It, there's no replacement theology in that, is there? No. He's still talking about his people and his nation. That's right. So we have to read between the lines when we, when we read this and understand that the thing, the kingdom, that the people that the Most High have chosen have not changed over the centuries. Right. We're still the same people that he chose. But hallelujah, he's beginning to make us aware of who we are. That's right. He's waking us up so that we can be a high in these last days. Mm -hmm. Next verse. For they have conspired together with one heart. One heart. They're all in the grief. This is not, they're not arguing. They're not warring, saying, you know what, we don't want to be involved. You know, you're doing too much. You know, in the United States, then, you know, they didn't rape and pillage and beat them. No, y'all want y'all be nicer to them. <laughs> no, ain't nobody speaking up for us. They come because they come together with one heart. That's right. They know that, 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 you know, that even if they don't want to physically do it, they don't want to get involved in not why because of the, because of the mighty ones they follow. These are the enemies of the most high. And, 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 and so they're going to conspire to, together to destroy us as a nation, as a people, to wipe out Yisrael, and they're doing it all with one heart, mm -hmm. one purpose. Mm -hmm. and it, you know, it's been going on since forever, mm -hmm. you know, but if you look at, you know, because they, again, they try to, you know, they, you know, take our, try to take our place and, you know, oh, well, you know, uh, 
the Germans, they conspired. But okay, well, once once the world found out what was going on, the world came to your aid. You know, the world didn't, oh, join on the bandwagon of Germany and, you know, uh, yeah, let's per let's continue to persecute these people. No, they came to your aid. It was a it was a world war, wasn't it? That's right. Mm -hmm. It was a war. They came to your aid. But who's coming to the aid of Israel? Exactly. A true Israel. Exactly. Nobody. Nobody speaks up. Matter of fact, they know. That's why when um, when uh, uh, other countries come to the United States, they don't get mistreated as minorities in this in this in this country because they come with a country that is backing them. Japanese Americans don't have to have somebody in office in order for them to, to experience rights and pleasures in this nation. Right. They don't have to have anybody in government and the higher ups and in, and in Congress that are, that are supporting them, that are speaking for them. Mm -hmm. Because what's speaking for them? The, a nation behind them. Right. The nation that's behind them, if they hear that Japanese Americans are being mistreated, then guess what? A nation is going to stand up and fight to, to make sure that their people, even their people abroad, mm -hmm. are being cared for properly. So even when they were thrown into internment camps, mm -hmm. they received reparations. Mm -hmm. That's right. Didn't they? From the United States government. Weird. They received <laughs> reparations. But well, we've experienced 400 <laughs> years. Ain't seen a dime. Ain't seen 40 acres until we bought it ourselves. <laughs> Ain't seen a mule from the government. Right. So we so we see that these nations are all conspiring together with one heart. The last verse. They have made a covenant against you. And they've made a covenant. A what? A covenant. Oh, well, wait a minute. There can't be a covenant without what? Blood. <laughs> yeah. So they're spilling somebody's blood. Innocent blood. Guess whose blood that is? They spill. Yeah. But they're coming as a covenant. And they know they can't, a, a one that they can't break. And this is what the Most High will show us throughout all of history, that all, all of all of creation, all, as far as mankind has come against his people. He's only had one nation. Out of the 70 nations, he said, you know what, I just need one. I will start them off from one family. When there's, when there's nations all around them, I'll start off from one family. And that one family struggling to even have one child. I'll build a nation. And then that nation will rule. And at the end, they will follow and do what, what he has required. But in that, in that, we're going to see all the way through. Because, see, we, all questions and all excuses will be wiped out you know, during this time when, when Ezekiel is speaking. Because... Hamashiach would have come and reigned righteously for a thousand years. So if he comes and reigned righteously for a thousand years, what excuse will you have to say that, well, we just didn't know what righteous rule looked like, and that's why we came against him? No, you'll know exactly what it looked like. And you'll still rise up and try to overcome the Most High's chosen people. Gog and Magog and all the nations of the four corners of the earth. So understanding that their covenant wasn't with the Most High, right. their covenant was with each other right. against us. Right. Okay? So we don't want to get that twisted. They have come together with the sole purpose in mind of cutting us off from being a nation. And that's the history that we've been experiencing for the past 400 years or more. Pick up where we at, third chapter? <laughs> third, third verse? Third verse, yeah, third verse. <laughs> and you shall say, thus says the Master Jehovah. Back to, we're back in Ezekiel, for those that are following, back to Ezekiel uh, 38, 38, chapter, third verse. And you shall say, thus says the Master Jehovah. 
See, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. Mm -hmm. And I shall turn you around, and I shall put hooks into your jaws, and shall lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, clad perfectly. A great assembly with armor and shields, all of them handling swords. I shall put a hook, I shall put hooks in your jaw, in your jaw. He's leading though, I mean, because when we see and understand the Most High is sovereign in everything. Mm -hmm. Now, he is not making these people do what they're doing, but we see that he is saying that I'm going to put hooks in your jaw. What did he say about Pharaoh? Bring it. Pharaoh, he was made, Pharaoh, uh, 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 his heart was hardened, but not hardened, not to go against his own will. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, or it was, or, or, or better said that Pharaoh was allowed to go in the direction that he desired to go. And so, if the Most High gave him the freedom or the permission to go in the direction that he desired, these nations, when we read in Revelations, these were deceived by Satan, and because of their deception, the most I said, oh, great. I'll then I'm, I, I will I'll bring you to the borders of my of, of my land as you desire to be brought there. I'll put hooks in your jaws and get you all the way up to the borders, and then I'm going to show myself to be Yahuwah Elohim and protector of this of my people, and you'll be destroyed in the valleys and in the mountains, and the whole world will know who I am. Gee. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them. Uh, Persia, Cush, and Put. Those are those are those are children of Ham. So in this version, it says Persia, Cush, and Libya mm -hmm. with them. Just just for clarity, mm -hmm. different translation. Mm -hmm. But what do those nations have in common right now? Who are they mostly comprised of? Muslims. Okay. They are mostly comprised of Muslims. Oh, and Tubal, Meshach and Tubal, Tubal, they have a history and they're known for human slavery. They have a history for, for human slavery. And so uh, we, we uh, just again to show the mindset of the people that uh, uh, that are involved, or the nations that are involved in this. Okay. All of them with shield and helmet, Gomer, and all its bands, the house of Tagomer, from the from the far north. In oh man, I'm sorry. Tagomer from uh, from the far north. And all its bands, <coughs> many peoples with you. So again, expanding that list of nations, so that we can understand that this is not just one single nation. That all the, that what we're going to be seeing is the nations from the four corners of the earth together coming, coming conspiring to war and to overcome a people. Okay. Be ready, prepare yourself, you and all your assemblies that are assembled unto you and you shall be a guard for them. Mm -hmm. After many days you shall be called up. In the latter years you shall come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste, but they were brought out of the peoples and all of them shall dwell safely. So he's letting them know that you don't, uh, you know, gather yourself, prepare yourself. Put on, you know, get, get all of your weaponry, all of all of all that you that you feel like you're gonna need to come against these people that are dwelling safely. The Most High is going. The Most High is going is not going to get in the way of their preparation. That's just like somebody told me, say, let you know, go get all of your nukes, get all of your bombs. I'll, I'll, we'll have open borders. We're not going to have walled cities. These people are, these people are, you know, are not are, are not preparing for war for you. 
Because my people don't have to prepare for war to you because he is our protector. These are the people that have been brought from all the four corners of the world that have been held under sword in captivity. These are the people that are going to be, uh, that have been brought back and are dwelling in their homeland safely. They're not looking, they're not, they're not striving to conquer the, conquer the world. They're not colonizers in Israel. Dwelling safely. Continue. And you shall go up, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your bands and many peoples with you. So you're going to come up like a cloud. It's going to look like a sea, an ocean of people mm -hmm. coming against the Most High's children. Mm -hmm. Thus said the Master Yehoah, and it shall be in that day that words arise in your heart, and you shall devise an evil plan. You shall devise an evil plan. So again, we read in 83 how they came, how they came with one heart. They're going to all have one, one evil heart. An evil plan is going to arise up in their hearts to come to think that they'll be able to come and destroy Israel. And you shall say, let me go up against a land of unwalled villages. Unwalled. So not prepare for war. Unwalled villages. Mm -hmm. Let me go to those at rest who dwell safely. And this is what he told us when we, as we was reading those prophecies that said we, that when he brought brought us back to the land that we would be at rest, dwelling safely. We didn't have any worries. Matter of fact, the land was flourishing and blossoming for us as we go back to our homeland. But there's going to be an evil plan devised by the nations of the world to come against the children of Israel. All so, of uh, current news. Also, another witness. Current news. Kushner peace plan to tear down walls of Jerusalem fulfills Ezekiel 38. So, as we look at 38 and 11, and you shall say, I will go up to the land of what? Unwalled villages. Mm -hmm. Kushner plan to tear down the walls. So there won't be, when there's no walls, it's easy to be attacked. <laughs> when there's no walls of protection, it's easy to be attacked. Kushner. Hmm. Interesting. Lives in the building with the address 666 in New York that he paid way too much money for. Y'all know who that is? Jared Kushner. Mm -hmm. Jared Kushner. Who is that? Son-in-law of the president. That's right. Son and, and I think he's a Jew. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Who may represent? And they call his father, they're liking his father to King Cyrus. Mm -hmm. But... While he's being likened to King Cyrus, he's given the job of making peace in the Middle East to his Jewish son-in-law, who plans to tear down the walls mm -hmm. of Jerusalem. But when you look, when you start to look into his background, you start to wonder who he is on the end stage of players because nobody's ever been able to bring a peace to the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So why is it that he lives, that he paid all those billions to have a, the address 666? Mm -hmm. Wow. We'll, we'll put that on the shelf. <laughs> all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates uh -huh. to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places and are again inhabited. So their, their plan is to come in and bring destruction and then to take the wealth that the Most High is providing for us. Because we, 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 we have learned that when we leave our captivity, what are we going to be leaving with? That's right. We're going to be leaving with great 
riches and spoil. Just like we left in the first captivity, they left with the riches of Mitzrayim. We're going to be we're going to leave with even greater riches, and then when we and then to a homeland that is blossoming for us. They're going to think, well, you know, we got to go in and get all of that back. They've been ruling for a thousand years. We're going to go in and we're going to, we're going to go in and destroy. They, they're not even going to be ready. They, they ain't building no walls. They ain't got no <coughs> gates up. We won't be locking our doors. Everything will be peace. We'll be dwelling in safety. In peace and safety. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. For when they cry, peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them. Mm. Hello? Where we at? Uh, the second, I mean the end of 12. Acquiring livestock and goods mm -hmm. who dwell in the middle of the land. Mm -hmm. Sheba and Dedan and, merchant, and the merchants of Tarshish. And all their young lions shall say to you, Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty? To bear away silver and gold? To take away livestock and goods? So the, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be questioned. The roundabout nations are going to ask, well, you, know, what are, you know, have you come to destroy these, this, this people? Continue. To take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy, and you shall say to God, Thus said the Master Jehovah, In that day, when my people Israel dwell safely, would you not know? Yeah, so you're going to know that they're dwelling safely. You're going to try to take advantage of what you, you deem to be an easy, easy prey. Because see, these nations... I mean, this nation here prides itself in its ability to protect itself. There's no, there's no major war happen, you know, uh, or no major uh, nations in the modern era come to, to fight on this, on this land. They take pride in that. You got the Great Wall of China. You got, a, you got walled cities and walled nations. Trump is trying to build a wall at the border. You know why? Because they 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 try to protect themselves and, and they pr take pride in that. Mm -hmm. Kim Jong Il and, and uh, 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 Trump talking about how many nukes they got and who you know and, and how powerful they are because everybody's taking pride in their ability to war. Mm -hmm. Would you not know exactly the condition that my people are in? They all they, they're living in peace. Safety. Ain't nobody running around with guns. And ain't nothing going on out there. I mean, this look like everybody having a good time. Ain't nobody got a care on it on their on in, in their mind. And y'all looking in, and he's he saying, "Would you know? Would, you wouldn't. You, you're going to know that." Continue. And you shall come from your place out of the far north. Out of the what? Far north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You and many peoples with you. Many people. All of them riding on horses. Now, riding on horses, horses are, 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 are always a, 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 a sign for military strength and might. So they're going to come with all of their military strength, all of their powers to be able to, uh, be, uh, to, be able to take over Israel. Continue. A greater... Well, wait a second. Let's, let's look back in history a little bit. There was a legend attached to Gog and Magog by the time of the Roman period mm -hmm. that the gates of Alexander were erected by Alexander the Great to repel the tribe. Romanized Jewish historian Josephus knew them as the nation descended from Magog, the Japhetite. So Josephus was saying that they're descended from that Magog descended from the Japhetite, mm -hmm. as in Genesis, and explained them to be the Scythians. Okay, so we've heard Japheth before, we've heard Scythians before, 
So what does he go on to say? Um, that they became an apocalyptic horde and throughout the medieval period, variously identified as Huns, Khazars, mm -hmm. Mongols, Right. Turanians or other nomads. Okay, so there's there's a witness from Josephus. Which 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 where are the Josephus are you reading from? Um I'm not reading from Josephus. This is a another article, so we I would have to find it What's in the title of the article. Gog and Magog. That's the title of the article. Gog and Mega. <laughs> Who was it by? Uh, let's see if they give a name. It's on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> so if you type in. A great assembly and a mighty army. So they're going to send a great assembly, a mighty army. Again, when these when these armies are coming in to destroy, it's going to it's going to look like they're going to have everything that they need to be able to destroy the Israel and all the people and all the inhabitants of the land of the most of, of the people of the Most High. Continue. And you shall come up against my people, Israel, like a cloud, mm -hmm. to cover the land. In the latter days it shall be. So this is going to happen in the latter days. He's not talking about something that's going to happen. You, as he's prophesying, they're getting ready to go. And, uh, and, and he's prophesying as they're in the Babylonian uh, 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 captivity. But what, is the, what he's talking about is the latter days. And he's talking about the days that are still yet ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I shall bring you against my land, in order that the nations know me, when I am set apart in you, O Gog, before their eyes. So, so that the nations will, will know us, know him. The nations need to learn who our Elohim is. They've not dealt with them at the, at the level at, uh, uh, that they should have because of our sin. Because our light went out, the nations have been allowed for centuries, thousands of years, to rule and to destroy this earth, to bring in all kinds of unrighteousness. Most High is going to deliver his people and set them in their own land. And he, we're he, the nations are going to see his people being blessed, but they're going to see his people also put complete trust in him, and it's going to look like we don't have any protection. Satan is going to be locked up, and when Satan gets re released, he is going to have the opportunity to say, the reason, it, the reason why y'all haven't been able to is because he has been locked up. Now he's been free, he's going to rule again, and all the nations will be will, will fall into deception to believe that they can overcome the Most High and His children. And this is where you'll see all of these armies, all of these nations, after a thousand years of uh, the millennial reign of our Messiah, you're going to see this nation come up against uh, these nations come up against uh, Israel. Question. Yes, so. Just from observation with all the different artilleries that we've been seeing marching up and down the streets and all the different, I don't know, armies that are being moved to different places, do you think that that is part of the gathering of that army? Not that, not this army, not we're talking here. Okay. That's, that's uh, uh, what is getting ready to happen is they're getting ready to, they're getting prepared for the tribulation that is coming. Okay. Okay. And that's going to be that tribulation uh, where the nations will be judged for what they've done in our captivity. And so they're getting ready to go through tribulation, the great tribulation. And so you're seeing all of these nations, wars are coming up, you know, martial law, may, you know, uh, pestilence and disease and, right. and, and, and chaos. All of these things are about to happen on the nations roundabout. 
the most high then you know will deliver his people and then as he's delivering his people into the land then we are going to reign and we're going to rule for a thousand years so we're so what we're seeing now is is a setup or the uh uh or the uh, uh, uh preparation for uh for judgment to happen on the earth. and surprisingly They've known for a long time that it's coming. The United States has been building underground cities mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. So has Russia. Mm -hmm. Building underground cities for the elite. And, and uh, Revelation speaks of them hiding in the caves and crying out for the rocks to fall on them and hide them from the one who's on the throne. Uh, they're not building the caves for us. Mm -hmm. They want to hide themselves mm -hmm. in the rocks. And so they, that means that they know what's coming. Mm -hmm. They know what's coming. They know that their time is coming to an end. And they're preparing. That When I've seen these uh, military vehicles being transported up and down the interstates right now, uh, I took a picture of one right. last week right. traveling through Tennessee and then in the last couple of days I saw another one wow. uh, military vehicles on trucks being transported through Tennessee you've been seeing them too they're getting ready for something they know something is coming we know it too but we know it because the Ruach HaKadosh is showing us to, to us in prophecy and in Torah I don't I know that uh, they know. I can't tell you how they know. But remember, they have access to many books, many historical things that we don't have access to. The Vatican has much material stored up. They have a telescope named Lucifer. They're looking out there into, into the Shamaim at something. They know something is coming. Well, their Elo their their Elohim will teach their leaders that and make them believe that they will be able to stop and overcome uh, this Exodus, the Most High delivering His people. It's just like in the first one when we left. Even after even after the Most High ravaged that uh, that nation with all types of plagues. When we got out in the desert, they still thought that they could stop us from from uh, reaching our destination, and so they sent them. They sent their troops out again after us, a people that uh, 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 weren't, weren't war warlike. We weren't. We you know we didn't leave with a bunch of you know weapons and things. We left with our poor, our children, our women, out into a desert. And they sent their army to come out to destroy and to break and bring and to bring us back. Mm -hmm. So they think so they 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 their their belief system, the the, the 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 mighty ones they follow, deceived them to make them believe that they could overcome us as a people. Mm -hmm. Most I ain't gonna let that happen. Hallelujah. Just like he didn't let it happen then, he ain't gonna let it happen now. So they can prepare all they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not going to be able to stop us from getting to where, you know, to get into our homeland. Okay. All right. Thus said the Master Yehovah, Are you the one I spoke of in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days to bring you against them? Most I always, always most, most I always lets, lets, lets our prophets know beforehand of all that is getting ready to happen. That's just how we know that, we, that he is faithful. We don't, we don't, you know, this is not blind faith. That's, that's, you know, that's, that, we, we don't, we don't follow blind faith. All of this has been told to us by our prophets at a long, I mean, many thousands of years beforehand. Blind faith is something that we ain't, that that no nobody know nothing about, no ideas, nothing. I mean, all the, everything everything that we're getting ready to go through, we've seen before, and it's repeating again, and it's been prophesied to happen. All we got to do is believe. It ain't blind faith. 
I'm walking by sight. I see all, I mean, I, I understand fully what's about to happen. Not in the, in the little detail, but I know, I know the most I'm getting ready to deliver us out of 400 years of captivity. God. Why? Because he said he was going to do it. And then he gave us a, he gave us a, a precursor of what that's going to look like when he set when he set our people free from Mitzrayim. So I know what's getting ready to happen. I know that they I know that they ain't going to like it. Mm -hmm. I know that the Most High is going to have to judge them. Why? Because he judged Mitzrayim. It's just happening all over again. Just in, in, in a, a cyclical. Cyclical. <laughs> Because I said we're going to get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're going to come back because they ain't going to be happy with, with the destruction they went through. And that's not going to be, that's not going to convince them enough. And then they're going to come back to try to, to, to gather us again. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to be destroyed again. Just like they did in our forefathers. With our forefathers. So we know it's going to happen. Because it's been prophesied. And we're reading about it today. This is future prophecy, and we know what's going to happen. You might not understand all the details. We're going to have to overcome our own personal fears and doubt, but we have to persevere and trust in the Most High that His Word is going to come to pass, just like it has always come to pass, and that He will destroy all of these nations as they come against them. Okay. And it shall be on that day, on the day when God comes against the land of Israel, declares the Master Yehovah. That my wrath shall come up in my face. His wrath shall come up in his face. What are we seeking? His face. We're seeking his face because we know, I mean, even when even when he turned his face from us, we were not we were not allowed to utterly be destroyed. Now we know what it's like when his face ain't when his face mm -hmm. is turning God. turned from us. You know, we know what we have suffered and what we've been through. And we consistently seek his face. Why? Because we desire to have the relationship that, that was promised to us at Mount Sinai. He's going to turn his face once again to us. But when his face turns towards another nation in wrath, oh, you look out. Look out. Woe to that nation. Okay. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. Now, he says in my jealousy. We know he loves us more than we can love anybody. I know what type of jealousy I have if another man come up against my wife, my daughter, or any of my family. The most high, the most high's jealousy is far greater than mine. You're coming against his people, and you're bringing everything you've got to come in and destroy his people and to take from them what he has provided and promised us understand what you're doing you're coming in to make the most high look like he's nothing mm -hmm. like he can't follow through mm -hmm. like he ain't the most high like he's just some uh, um, some weakling you know uh, uh, doing a couple of magic tricks mm -hmm. so the most high said I'm in my Right out of my jealousy, I'm going to deal with you. Because I, because not only are you coming against his people, but you're coming against his very word, his very promises, the covenant that he has made with him. You're standing against him and all of that to make him look like he is not who he said he is. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. On that day, there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Oh, when he get upset, it gonna, the whole earth going to shake. Where is this shaking going on? Yisrael. Yes, right. Yes, right. Not heaven? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, what did you think I like? Not heaven? Oh. <laughs> so that the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field and all the creeping creatures that are uh, that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. So he letting you know, all the creation gonna know that he getting ready to respond to what is about to happen. It ain't gonna be no secret. It ain't gonna be somebody sitting up under some shade tree trying to figure out, you know, man, you know, you know, 
what's, what's going to happen today? What's, you, know, what, you, know, you know, where are we at in, 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 in all that is going on? No. It's going to be such a shaking that even the fish in the sea, they going they, they to tremble because they know the Most High is getting ready to respond to a great uh, grievance through his wrath and through his anger and jealousy. Continue. And the mountains shall be thrown down, mm -hmm. and the steep places shall fall, and every wall fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. And I shall call for a sword against God. On all my mountains, declares the master. Here. I'm going to call for a sword. I'm going to call for destruction of God. That leader that's leading all of these nations in to come and to destroy Israel. I'm going to cause a sword to come upon them. Destruction is what he's talking about. Continue. The sword of each one being against his brother. Oh! My people ain't gonna have to run through the, the through the mountains looking for you. I'm gonna cause your all of these armies and all of these nations. I'm gonna cause y'all to kill each other. They gonna gather thinking that they're gonna come into Israel and to destroy his people. He's gonna say no. You know, I'm gonna act in such a way that you are going to destroy yourself. You're going to, the sword is going to come against, and y'all going to be killing each other. Okay? And I shall judge him with pestilence and blood. Pestilence and blood, they're going to come healthy and get riddled with disease. And Rid, riddled with issues, causing fear, causing mental instabilities, physical instability. Okay? And rain down flood. Flooding rain and hailstones. The very elements gonna come against you. Hail, flooding rain, mudslides, mm -hmm. all kinds of calamities gonna fall upon y'all as y'all think y'all gonna march against his people. Fire and sulfur. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah. It's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be a mess. You're right. It's gonna be a mess. They gonna think they ain't gonna know what happened. They all hell gonna get gonna break out. As far as they can say. <laughs> on him and on his bands and on the many peoples who are with him. Not just God. Yeah, you let him here, but everybody you led here gonna have to deal with this. Everybody you brought with you. Gonna have to gonna have to suffer all of it, all of what he all of what is going on. Continue. And I shall exalt myself and set myself apart, and I shall be known in the eyes of many nations. Well, so I'm gonna exalt myself. When you get when I get down, y'all gonna all be worshiping. You're gonna be crying up, saying that he is the most high. That he that he is, he is Elohim. If they're able to even, if they're able to even cry out, because there's going to be dissension. There's going to be those that, those that are going to recognize early. Wait a minute, we're coming against the true and living God. And then there's going to be those that are late bloom coming in and saying, you know, what, what are you doing? What are you saying? And cutting throats and cutting in. They're going to start killing themselves, pestilence, disease. Hail, rain, fire from heaven gonna be falling down on them. It's gonna be complete chaos mm -hmm. to all of these nations that have that that have even thought that they may come in and destroy the most the most high children. Those that are down there living in peace, safety, no walls, ain't locking their door. All of this great wealth and all of this great beauty. Okay? And they shall know that I am Jehovah. You gonna know that I am Jehovah. Continue, thirty nine. And you, son of man, prophesy against God, and you shall say, "Thus said the Master Jehovah: See, I am against you, O God, the Prince of Raj, Meshach, and Tubal." God, as a leader, as 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 a head, as as a Antichrist figure, thinking that you're going to come in. And all of the leaders of all of the nations that are that, that have come with you, I'm against you. And shall turn you around and lead you on, 
and bring you up from the uttermost parts of the north and bring you against the mountains of Israel. I'm gonna bring. I'm. 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 I'm opening up. I'm opening up a way for you to make, to, to to come in through your own deception, through your own belief that you're gonna have uh, again. Believe that you could come in against my children. Continue. And shall strike the bow out of your left hand. I'm knocking. I'm a knock. When you get there, I'm gonna take away from you your ability to be even to able. Your ability to even fire a weapon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to knock the bow out your head. Continue. And make the arrows fall from your right hand. Uh, Y'all going to get there and find that you're weak and got nothing. Okay. On the mountains of Israel you shall fall. And you and all your bands and the peoples who are with you. I'm not going to do this while you're home. Once you get into the mountains when you think you can strike. You're gonna find you ain't got nothing. You're gonna find you weak. I'm gonna knock it. I'm gonna knock the, uh, the the bow and the arrows out your hands, and you and, and and right in the right in the view of my children. Why? Because we are going to know also that He is Yahuwah, our Elohim. It's like uh, we're not gonna be just sitting there and know, not knowing what's going on. We're gonna know these nations have come up against. It's gonna be a sea of a sea of sea of people. Millions of men coming into war against Israel, and we will see the Most High act on our behalf. We will know, just as they will know, that He is truly our Elohim. To, to the birds of uh, the second half of four, to the birds of prey of every sort, to the beasts of the field I shall give you for food. I'm gonna let the birds and the beasts know that a feast is about to happen. Something in them is gonna draw, is going they gonna know. When this when when they begin to march on Yisrael, the buzzing, something in them gonna cause them to say, you know what? We getting ready to feast, y'all. The lions, the hyenas. All of the carniv carnivorous animals that are, that you know they're gonna all be on alert because food is about to be broke out because because these <laughs> these nations about to fall and there's gonna be there's gonna be an abundance right. of food. I just thinking about when Israel when we got ate the birds and got sick and died they're gonna be eating us uh, with us but them and dying <laughs> it's gonna be so full. <laughs> Revelation <laughs> chapter 6 and verse 7. When he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Understand that the Most High already has tools and ways of going about things that are just, you're going to do over and over again. Same, same plagues that we see in Mitzrayim, he's going to do at the end. Same thing he's going to do at doing in this, this present judgment that's about to happen, he's going to do at the end. It's the same thing over and over again that they're going to see. The same thing that we went through because of our disobedience. They're going to go through because of their, dis because of their disobedience and the, and the deceit that they're going through. They're going to have to go. They're going to have to, they're going to, have to suffer. Plagues, disease, hunger, destruction, sore. All of them are going. To, all of you know. All of them are going to suffer the same place. They, you know, they didn't get the message when they left out of Misraim. They didn't. Get, they, they didn't get the message. They, they, they're not going to get the message when they go through this. When they go through this uh, tribulation, and then and, and they're going to have to go through it again at the end, at the end of the millennial reign. We're going to see it over and over again. Continue. And on the face of the field, you shall fall. For I have spoken, declares the Master Yehovah. Not in my yard they gonna fall. <laughs> not, not you know, not on my street, but in the field. 
before they get there. Before they, before they become a threat, they're going to fall in the field. The Most High is going to take care of them. In pursuit. That speaks of the Most High fighting for us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've seen that before, right? In right. Scripture, we've seen him turn armies on each other. We've seen him fight for us. Stand still and see the salvation of Yahuwah. That's what Moshe said at the, at the Red Sea. Stand still. You don't have to fight. Stand still and see the salvation of your Lord. Well, just watch what I'll do. Mm -hmm. He fights for us, Yisrael. And I shall send fire upon Magog, and on those who live under, uh, undisturbed in, in the coastlands. Uh-oh. <laughs> and they shall know that I am your hope. So... The fact that y'all came up, not only is your army going to perish, but I'm going to go into your, I'm gonna go into your land and I'm going to take care because that's where y'all started. That's where y'all planned this. I'm going to take care of all of it, even your homeland. When you think it's peace, when you think you got it made, when you think you're protected, I'm going to go into those very places and I'm going to rain down my wrath upon 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 those that are in, uh, in, the, in the garrison, those that are behind the lines. Continue. And I shall make my set apart name known in the midst of oh, my... And they're going to know who I am when I get there. Mm -hmm. And I shall make my set apart name known in the midst of my people, Yisrael. Mm -hmm. And not let my set apart name be profaned anymore. Mm -hmm. So, again, looking out for his name. What did he say? He's going to protect us. Mm -hmm. So if you come against us, then you're going against him. Why? Because he said... I'm their protector. You think you will come in and then cause them to doubt me or to, or to, or to, or to not trust me? I'm going to come in and I'm going to destroy everybody that's coming against the very words that I've spoken to my people. And this is why it's important. That's why I said, you know, in our, our previous lesson, when we ask that question, why is it important to know who Israel is? Because you got to understand that if you're going to come against them or you're going to speak against them or make promises to them that you can't fulfill, then you're bringing upon destruction upon your own head. Mm -hmm. It's also important to note, looking at verse 7, that all who say they are Yisrael are not Yisrael. Let's read that again. So I will make my Kodesh name known in the midst of my people, Yisrael, and I will not let them pollute my Kodesh name anymore. So... Who is he talking about there? Before he gets to the heathen, I will not, I will make my Kodesh name known in the midst of my people, Yisrael, and I will not let them pollute my Kodesh name anymore. And then he goes on to say, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahuwah, the Holy One, and, and how would that happen? Well, if, if we don't see him moving on our on our behalf, then we start blaspheming his name. We start saying he can't, or we start doubting. He's like, I'm not going to let my people do this. I'm not going to let them scurry in fear. I promised them peace and safety, and that's how they've been dwelling. I promised them a homeland, and I placed them there. I made a, I renewed a covenant with them. And here it is, the nations of the world are coming, uh, are, are going to come to try to take away what I've provided for my children, for his bride. Oh, don't think he ain't going to act in jealousy. Don't think he's not going to, because he's going to say, I'm going to make sure that my people don't ever look at me like that. I, I can't. You come against me and mine, I don't want, it. how am I going to feel my wife coming up to me and saying, you, you can't protect me. That hurts me. I know, dude, I'm not going to let my wife have to say that. You're going down. You're going to break into my house? At the end of the day, she's going to know that she got to protect her. First of all, I'm going to make her feel sorry for you. 
<laughs> because it ain't going to be no easy time. You ain't going to leave. I'm not going to just put the bullet in your forehead. Let me not get too graphic. But <laughs> <laughs> by the end of the day, you go, she don't feel sorry for you. Okay? See, it shall come and it shall be done, declares the Master Yehovah. This, this is the day of which I have spoken. And those who inhabit the cities of Israel shall go out and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and armor, the bows and arrows, the clubs and spears, and they shall make fires with them for seven years. Now understand how much resources are going to be out there in the field. This army was so massive. When they are destroyed, there will be enough resources to last for seven years. Mm. Seven years. Okay. And take no wood from the field, nor cut down any from the forest. For with the weapons they make fire, and they shall plunder those who plundered them. And loot those who looted them, declares the Master Yehovah. And it's going to be riches. There's going to be, uh, uh, again, resources out in the field from the from the, from those that were destroyed that last seven years. You won't even have to take the natural resources from the land because it's going to be all out there in the destroyed armies that last for seven years. And it shall be on that day that I give Gog a place for a burial site there in Israel. <laughs> They're gonna, they're gonna march straight into their grave. Mm. Okay. Uh, the valley of those passing by east of the sea, and stopping those passing by, because there they shall bury Gog and all his crowd, and shall call it the valley of Haman Gog. Mm -hmm. And the house of Israel shall bury them for seven new moons in order to cleanse the land. So it's going to take seven. It's going to take seven months just to be able to bury all of the bodies. Just to bury all of the bodies. I mean, again, and then the resources left behind is seven years worth. Of. And it shall, and all the people of the land shall bury them. And it shall be for a name to them on the day, on the day that I am esteemed, declares the Master Yehovah. Mm -hmm. And they shall separate men who continually pass through the land, bearing those who were passing through, those left on the surface of the ground, in order to cleanse it. And at the end of seven new moons they shall search, and those passing through shall pass through the land. And when anyone sees a man's bone, he shall set up a sign beside it till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hem and God. At the end, after the end of seven new moons, they saw search. What does that mean? Seven what? Months. months. Seven months. Mm -hmm. Seven new moons. We have to understand the clues are all from Scripture about what the Most High does in his system of passing time. Seven new moons. If you don't really think about it, you don't understand that that's seven months. Because the moon signifies the beginning of the month. So after seven new moons, you pass the period of time of seven months. Hallelujah. We have to pay attention to the luminaries that the Most High put in the sky because he put them there for signs, for seasons, for days, for years, and for... And also a city named uh, Hamona shall be there, and they shall cleanse the land. And you, son of man, thus said the master of Hoa, speak to every sort of bird and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come, gather from all around to my slaughtering, which I am slaughtering for you, a great slaughtering on the mountains of Israel. So, most High is going to provide even a cleanup team. There's going to be cities around about Israel that are going to come in and start burying 
the body of these. And then he's gonna get nat he's gonna get nature itself, because he's gonna again drive the animals to come in and feast off of the bone, off of the bone. So you know, and, and, and make and make the task even easier to get you know to bury these uh, of these people. But it's gonna be a a, a mass a, a, a mass burial. A, a, it's gonna take seven months of uh, these animals going in and just picking away at these carcasses and people burying and people burying these bodies. And you shall and you shall eat flesh and drink blood. Eat the flesh of the mighty. Drink the blood of the princes of the earth. This is talking about the animals. Mm -hmm. Of <laughs> and rams and lambs, of goats and bulls, <laughs> all of them fatlings of, of Bashan. And you shall eat fat till you are filled, and drink blood till you are drunk, at my slaughtering which I am slaughtering for you. And you shall be satisfied at my table with horses and riders, with mighty men, and with all men of battle, declares the Master Yahweh. So again, these animals, all these creatures that are going to go in and uh, partake in the feast, all of them going to be, all of them going to be filled, have their fill with all of the horses and the animals, the the uh, from uh, uh, um, uh, from the dignitaries down to the private. <laughs> you know, the dignitaries ain't going, you know, they're not going, they're not going to get their own special. You know, ceremonies and grades, they'll make a difference from the highest down to the lowest. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be they gonna be they gonna be dealt with right out there in that field. Your birth field. Twenty-one. And I shall set my esteem upon the nations, and all the nations shall see my judgment which I have executed, and my hand which I have laid on them. So all the nations are gonna see, they're only gonna be aware and know that the most high has acted on behalf of his children. And the house of Israel shall know that I am Yehovah, their Elohim, from that day on. We ain't going to have an issue with that, I mean, knowing who the Most High is. From that day forward, it won't be, it, it will uh, go unmistakably who the Most High is, and that he provides protection and care for his children, for his people, his set-apart people. He said he was, we was going to be there in safety. He said we were going to be there in peace. We see, we see, we see the imposters there now. They're not there in safety and peace. They claim they have gotten there in 1948. Well, there should be safety and peace. The Most High should be there uh, protecting them. But no, they get they get uh, what is it, 6.3 billion dollars a year. They get all the technology for the United States. Money being shipped in all over the place, you know, for them to be able to try to keep, you know, protect themselves from the nations around about them that they've never had peace with since they've been there. <laughs> Most I say, I'm gonna take you out when I when, when I when the true children get to the land, you're gonna see that land flourish, and we see that land in preparation now, Hallelujah. preparing itself for our return. Hallelujah. And then when we get there. We ain't gonna have no walls up. Mm, we're we coming gonna, down there. We, we, we're coming down now. We're gonna be there in safety Hallelujah. and peace. Yes. And when and when and when and when the nations that have conspired together to come against us, they will all be destroyed and their bodies and their and and, the, and, and their weapons will be right there. In the field, in the valleys, in the mountains, they ain't coming in. It, it won't. It won't be in our home now. We ain't gonna be tripping over all of that. He said, "I'm gonna deal with them in the field. The nations that are out there, the, the, the nations round about, they're gonna be the ones buried. We don't even have to bury. They'll be buried. If somebody's passing through, they'll be getting flags." All right, what, what's, what's this? It's a bundle of flags. Okay, you see a dead body, just put the flag in there. We get it. You're gonna be walking by, and they're gonna be animals. They ain't gonna be worried about you. Why? Because they got they feasting on all of the soldiers that had failed for oh. seven months to rid the valleys and the surrounding areas of all of those bodies. A picture just came to my mind when we were talking about the wall falling. 
you know, I think about Jericho when they marched around seven times and the walls came tumbling down. Now I think about us, Israel, facing the east as we sing and pray and how in the Shemaim things are coming mm -hmm. down because we're the walls facing coming down the again. walls are coming down because the yeah. true people yeah. are crying out Hallelujah. towards the most high. Mm -hmm. And our, you know, I could just see that in the spiritual realm, how it's facing that way and things in the spirit realm are coming down mm -hmm. and it's showing up in the natural. But the most I don't want us relying on the wall of cities. Yeah. I mean, we get there and we think, well, because there's walls that we go, no, let the walls come down because it's, you know, the walls came down as they, you know, uh, uh, prior to them go going into the to promised land before and they're coming down now as we get ready to go into the promised land. Because that's not going to be, that's not, that's not a source of our protection. Mm -hmm. We're not to rely on that. And, and so when he says that we're going to be in Wall City, why? Because we don't trust in, in, in weaponry of war, in Wall Cities, in, in, in garrisons and forts. Our trust is in him. And he is, and he is going to honor that with a with an extreme jealousy. Yeah. You put your trust in me. I'm gonna make sure I don't fail you. That's right. And that's why we're gonna see him act in such wrath, because that very thing will be challenged by the nations, and he's got to show up. Show out. And show out. He's gonna do. He's gonna show up and show out. <laughs> Where we at? 23. And the nation shall know that the house of Israel went into exile for their crookedness mm -hmm. because they have trespassed against me so that I hid my face from them. He what? I hid my face from them. So when we went into exile, that's that's how we went. Because see, while his face is turned towards us, nothing can happen to us. And the nation's Understand that. So when our faith, when his face was turned from us, that's when we went into exile. That's when they have the opportunity to come in and and and, and rob us. But when his face is toward, turned towards us, and in his wrath, he fa it faces our enemies. Ain't look, ain't nothing. No pestilence, no beast, no man, no nothing can come against us as a people. And the world will understand that. Because they're going to question, how is it that we were able to capture them and ship them over and to make them work in our fields for all for all these 400 years? Well, they're going to know why it was because my face was turned, turned from them. Right. Okay. And you're going to know that that was the only way that that could happen because when my face is turned towards them again, y'all can't even get past the valleys <laughs> and the mountains. <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> and I gave them into the, the hand of their adversaries, and they all fell by the sword. Mm -hmm. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. Therefore, thus said the Master Jehovah, Now I am going to bring back the captives of Yaakov. And I shall have compassion on all the house of Israel. On the whole house of Israel. All the house of Israel. Israel. Yeah. <laughs> and shall be jealous for my set apart name. I shall be jealous for my set apart name. I'm bringing them back, and for my name's sake, and with an extreme jealousy, I'm going to make sure every promise, every word that I that I've given to a prophet, comes to pass. The world gonna find out who he messing with. Okay. And they shall have borne their shame and all their trespass they committed against me. So we 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 go all of the shame that we're bearing, we it's gonna be over with. It's gonna be over with. We're coming out of this, and no longer are we gonna have to bear the shame of our crookedness and the sinfulness. Of, of, of what we did that brought us into this. Continue. Uh, when they dwell safely in their own land, with none to make them afraid. Who? None to make us afraid. There ain't nothing in all of creation that's going to be able to make us afraid. Because most of stands for us. 
I remember, I, you know, when, when, when you grow up and you got big brothers that will stand for you, that will fight for you, and that the whole city knows who, you, who they are, these little brothers that walk around, they ain't, they ain't afraid of nothing. They'll talk to somebody two, three times bigger than them and be running their mouth. Why? Because they big brother standing by. Mm -hmm. I ain't afraid of nobody. Why? <laughs> when Johnny, when Johnny hear that you didn't say what you said to me, I'm sorry, bro. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you, the best place for you gonna be in the jail cell because because when right. my brother hear what you said about my mama, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> The most high is like, look, my people ain't gonna have nobody and nothing in all the creation to fear. Why? Because I stand for them. My face was turned from them when they went into exile. That's why everything y'all see happened. Now that my face is turned towards them again, believe this, nothing is gonna make them afraid. Now watch this in verse 27. <laughs> he gonna reveal his hidden ones to the nations. All this time they've been abusing us. All this time they've been pillaging and plundering and raping and doing all the heinous things that they did, hanging us from trees. Now he's about to sanctify us Ooh, in the sight of the nations. Continue. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of the land of their enemies, mm -hmm. and I shall be set apart in them, for the eyes of many nations. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And they shall know that I am Jehovah, their Elohim, who sent them into exile among the nations, and then gathered them back to their own land, and left none of them wow. behind. Left none of them behind. You don't get a chance, you don't get a chance to gloat and say, I got one over here hidden on an island somewhere where you couldn't find it. No, I left none of them behind. When Moshe was leaving, and, and Pharaoh was like, well, uh, uh, well, only the men could go. No, all of them go. Well, I'll let you, the women, and the kids go. No, every hoof going to be here. <laughs> every hoof. <laughs> you, you, you don't even get to keep a horseshoe. <laughs> no souvenirs. <laughs> Come on. And no longer do I hide my face from them, for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, declares the Master. Your no Lord. more am I going to hide my face from them. I'm going to tell you, when the Most High turns his face towards us again, look, I mean, this is why I say, I mean, I, I get, every time I hear, I mean, even reference that he's going to turn his face towards us once again, chills run through me. Because I know how powerful that is. I mean, we look at we look at who we are now, and we can see residue of the greatness in us, mm. just in our in our intelligence, in our creativity, mm -hmm. in our physical uh, prowessness in sports, our resilience as a people. We have all of this, and his face ain't even turned towards us. When he turns towards us, man, it's going to look like, I mean, it's going to look so unfair. <laughs> We're going to be like, well, we need an Elohim like that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Better enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, it's going to be, it's the blessings and the abilities and, and the esteem that has been poured out on us. Because his face turned towards us, it goes beyond our wildest imagination. There won't be any doubt who he is and who we belong to. No doubt whatsoever. That's why he keeps saying, and you're going to know I'm not, uh, who I am. I'm your core, your Elohim, mm -hmm. and the whole world going to know. It ain't going to be a doubt in their mind. Unmistakable. <laughs> Got the last yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a glorious time and what a glorious day it will be when the Most High performs His words. 
what unspeakable joy we will know as a nation. Ooh-wee! <laughs> but we better make sure yeah. that we repent mm -hmm. of all of our sins. We better make sure that we're ready, Yisrael, because the, our former sins cannot go in with us. Right. We have to get the leaven out now. The sock is about to come up. We don't only have to get the leaven out of our houses, but we have to get the leaven out of our lives. That's right. That's right. Any sin that's hiding in the crevices, we got to get it out. Make sure that you bring every thought into captivity. And Hashem Yahusha, as as the gets closer to Pesach, expect attacks from the enemy. Expect it, because the enemy is still trying to do his steal, kill, destroy routine that he's been doing since the garden. So we have to be prayed up, fasted up, and engaged in spiritual warfare. There's a battle going on in the Shamayim right now. And we have to be engaged down here against the principalities, the powers, and the spiritual wickedness in high places. We have to be salt and light. We have to be. He said, be ye Kodesh as I am Kodesh. So there's not room for us to fall off now. If you fall, you better repent and get back up. But we have to be engaged. We can't be lukewarm. We can't be sitting on the fence. Well, I'll just go with whatever side is winning. No. It's already been prophesied. Only one side is going to win. And you want to be on that winning side. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. And we already know who the winners are, so it's, it's an easy it's, choice. It's an easy choice. <laughs> but remember the, these words. Not by power, <laughs> nor by <laughs> might, <laughs> but by <laughs> my Ruach HaKadosh. Say it's Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay? So we can't do it in our own strength. We have to be dependent on Him. He's the one who's going to provide His Ruach. He's the one that's going to pour out His Ruach on all flesh. He's the one that's going to bring the prophecy to pass. He's the one that's going to fight for us. Hallelujah. He's the one. Hallelujah. Not us. Not in our strength. Hallelujah. Let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. We have to be meek, humble. And when he starts doing what he does, we remember. He already told us, vengeance is his. It's not ours. We don't have any place in that. So let us stay prayed up and fasted up and let us Become skilled in spiritual warfare because if you're not doing it now, it's going to be too late when it happens. The enemy's going to sift you if you're not getting ready now. If you're not, make sure that your heart is where it should be. Because as we see all along, over and over in the scriptures, people with heart conditions and their hearts failing them because they didn't. They prayed up, fasted up, and didn't depend on the Most High. We can't lean to our own understanding. It's Him. It's always been, been Him. It's always going to be Him. He is our salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Ab, uh, and as we get ready to pray, we hear the rooster crowing outside the window.
He's saying, wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even the animals know what time it is. It's time for us to wake up. Ab Yahuwah, we come now saying, Toda Rabbah, to your word which came forth from your Torah today, from the writings of your prophets, from Tehillim, from your Proverbs, and from your word. It is by your word, according to your will, your way. We desire to be obedient to you. Continue to lead us and guide us in your paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We say, Toda Rabbi, that you have already made provision for us and that you're going to manifest your word. Help us to be strong. Gird us up even now in our Ruachs. Give us the resolve to decide that we will be on fire for you. Allow us to be your witnesses in the arrests in these last and wicked days. Help us to be salt. Help us to be light to the nations. And for our own families and friends that still slumber. And I don't mean in their graves. I mean the ones that have their heads buried in the sand. I who we pray that you would Send a witness unto them. If they can't receive it from us, send another that the seed would be planted, that it would be watered, that it would fall upon fertile ground, and that you would give the increase and they would be added unto your kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing too big for you, and we know that you are able and that your sheep will hear your voice and another will they not respond to hallelujah. hallelujah so as we prepare to go and share a meal that is your bounty we ask that you would rock it to the nourishment of our bodies and our minds and that you would sanctify it and purify it in Hashem Yahusha we ask that you would touch those that are sick amongst our people that you would touch, heal, renew, restore, make whole, and even rekindle the fire in their heart if necessary. Hallelujah. We ask that you would be a hedge and protection about the children of Israel on today. And we ask that for those that are in need, whose cars have broken down, whose uh, jobs have been lost, whose uh, situation is unspoken. We ask that you would meet their needs, uh, uh, spoken and unspoken, that um, they would know that you are Yahuwah. Savuot, Yahuwah of hosts. Hallelujah. We ask all these things as always in the name of your Yahid, Yahusha Hamashiach. And all who believed said, Hallelujah. 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 Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you. And show favor to you. And show favor to you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you. And give you. And give you. Shalom. Shalom.